Elon Musk just shocked China and NASA with one announcement that changes everything. While China plans to land humans on the moon by 2030, Musk revealed SpaceX can build an entire permanent moon base in just five missions, using technology that delivers 200 tons per flight, double what Apollo ever managed. But here's the real question. Will the next person walking on the moon speak English or Mandarin? Let's dive right in. Here's the real story behind SpaceX's Moon Base Alpha announcement and why China's space officials are scrambling to catch up. While the world focused on landing dates, Musk quietly revolutionized the fundamental technology that makes lunar colonization possible. The game changer isn't just Starship's massive size, it's the Raptor 3 engine that powers it. Picture this, an engine so advanced that when SpaceX first revealed it, competitors thought it was fake. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, publicly questioned whether the photos were real. The engine looked stripped down, almost skeletal compared to previous versions. But that wasn't a mistake. It was genius engineering that's about to make China's lunar timeline irrelevant. The numbers are staggering. Raptor 3 produces 560,000 pounds of thrust. That's 100,000 pounds more than its predecessor and nearly double the original Raptor. But here's where it gets insane. This monster engine actually weighs 170 pounds less than the previous version. How do you make something more powerful yet lighter? By completely reimagining rocket engineering, SpaceX eliminated thousands of external components through revolutionary 3D metal printing. What used to require dozens of separate parts welded together now gets manufactured as single integrated pieces. The result? An engine so clean it looks unfinished, but performs like nothing humanity has ever built. But there's a dark side to this advancement. These engines are so integrated that when something breaks, SpaceX has to literally cut them open for repairs. Musk admitted they sometimes need to cut the engine open because there are no access panels anymore. It's a calculated risk, perfect reliability in exchange for impossible maintenance. Why did SpaceX choose methane? When everyone else uses kerosene or hydrogen, the answer reveals Musk's true strategy for lunar dominance. While NASA struggles with hydrogen's complexity and other companies rely on kerosene's simplicity, methane offers something revolutionary. It can be manufactured on Mars. But here's the twist nobody saw coming. Methane burns so cleanly that it leaves no residue. That means these engines can fire repeatedly without degradation. Traditional rocket engines accumulate soot and damage with each use. Raptor 3 stays pristine, enabling the rapid reusability that makes Moonbase Alpha economically feasible. The temperature challenges were nearly impossible to solve. Raptor's pre-burners reach 600 bar of pressure, twice the main combustion chamber's pressure. That creates temperatures hot enough to melt the world's most advanced metals in seconds. SpaceX develops secret alloys with exotic names like SEX-500. But even those aren't enough. Here's where SpaceX's engineering gets truly revolutionary. They pump the rocket's own fuel, liquid methane at minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit, through microscopic channels carved into the engine walls. The fuel cools the metal while simultaneously heating up for combustion. It's like using ice cubes to cool your coffee while making it hot enough to drink. But this creates a paradox that nearly killed the program. The fuel must be cold enough to prevent metal failure, but hot enough for efficient combustion. Get the balance wrong by even a few degrees, and the engine either melts or fails to ignite. SpaceX solved this through what they call film cooling, in injecting tiny amounts of cool propellant along chamber walls to create protective barriers. The complexity is mind-bending. Each Raptor 3 processes several tons of propellant per second, while maintaining temperatures precise enough to keep exotic metals from disintegrating. One sensor failure, one cooling channel blockage, one temperature spike, and the entire system catastrophically fails. SpaceX didn't just build better engines. They reinvented how engines get built. Traditional aerospace manufacturing requires months of precise assembly, with thousands of individual components welded and bolted together. Raptor 3 uses 3D printing, to create entire engine sections as single pieces. This isn't just faster, it's physically impossible with traditional methods. The internal cooling channels are too complex, 
The geometry is too precise. The material property is too specific. SpaceX literally prints rocket engines layer by layer, creating shapes that couldn't exist any other way. But here's the shocking part. This technology is so advanced that even if competitors steal SpaceX's designs, they can't copy them. The 3D printing processes, the exotic alloys, the software that controls fabrication, it's all proprietary. China's space program, despite massive government funding, is years behind this manufacturing capability. Every other rocket engine in history wastes fuel. They dump unused propellant overboard to prevent overheating, accepting inefficiency for reliability. Raptor 3 uses every single drop of fuel twice, first to power the turbo pumps, then for main combustion. It's called full flow stage combustion, and it was considered impossible until SpaceX made it work. The engineering challenge is insane. You need two separate combustion chambers running at different fuel ratios, one oxygen-rich, one methane-rich. Both operate at pressures that would destroy conventional engines. The exhaust from these chambers must perfectly balance to avoid catastrophic vibrations, and the entire system must restart flawlessly after sitting in the vacuum of space. Russia tried this technology for decades and never made it work reliably. The Soviet Union's RD-270 engine exploded repeatedly during testing. Even today, no other country has successfully demonstrated full-flow stage combustion in operational rockets. SpaceX didn't just master it. They made it so reliable that each Starship uses 33 of these engines simultaneously. Here's what keeps other space agencies awake at night. Raptor 3 engines are designed to fire hundreds of times without major maintenance. Traditional rocket engines are single-use or require complete rebuilds after each flight. SpaceX's engines land, get briefly inspected, and fly again within days. The economic implications are staggering. A traditional rocket engine costs millions and gets thrown away after one use. Raptor 3 costs less to manufacture and flies repeatedly. That's not just cost savings. It's a completely different economic model that makes ambitious projects like Moonbase Alpha financially possible. But reusability creates new challenges nobody anticipated. Engines must survive not just the violent forces of launch, but the extreme conditions of re-entry. They face temperatures exceeding 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit while traveling at thousands of miles per hour. The fact that they work at all defies conventional engineering wisdom. SpaceX plans to manufacture thousands of these engines, not dozens, thousands. That requires production techniques the aerospace industry has never attempted. Traditional rocket engines are handcrafted by skilled technicians over months. Raptor 3 must roll off production lines like automobiles. The quality control challenges are enormous. Every engine must perform identically despite mass production. One bad batch could destroy multiple starships and set the program back years. SpaceX is essentially betting their entire Mars colonization timeline on their ability to mass-produce the world's most complex machines. Current production rates suggest SpaceX builds roughly one Raptor engine per day. To support their ambitious launch schedule, they need to reach one engine per hour. That's not just scaling. It's reinventing manufacturing at a pace that makes traditional aerospace companies dizzy. Musk revealed that Raptor 3 is just the beginning. He mentioned thousands of changes left to come as SpaceX continues iterating the design. Each version becomes more powerful, more efficient, and paradoxically simpler. It's evolution at technological speed. The development philosophy is radical. Question every component, eliminate everything unnecessary, integrate what remains. Traditional aerospace moves slowly, testing each change exhaustively. SpaceX builds, tests, fails, and improves at breakneck speed. They've redesigned Raptor more in five years than most companies change engines in decades. This creates a moving target for competitors. By the time China or Russia copy Raptor 2 technology, SpaceX has moved on to Raptor 4 or 5. It's not just technological superiority, it's technological acceleration that leaves everyone else in the dust. The engines powering Moonbase Alpha aren't just upgraded, they're completely reimagined. Block 2 starships eliminate the heat shields that protected previous engine bays. Instead, the engines cool themselves through integrated thermal management. It's like removing the safety net because you've become too good to fall. 
This integration extends throughout the entire vehicle. Fuel lines, electrical systems, structural components, everything connects in ways that seemed impossible just years ago. The result is a spacecraft that's simultaneously more capable and more elegant than anything ever built. But integration comes with risks. When everything connects to everything else, single failures can cascade catastrophically. Flight 7 demonstrated this when a propellant leak triggered a sequence of engine failures that destroyed the vehicle. The very integration that makes Starship revolutionary also makes it vulnerable in new ways. SpaceX isn't just building rockets. They're building rocket factories. The Star Factory at Starbase represents a complete rethinking of aerospace manufacturing. Instead of assembling vehicles in hangars, they're produced on moving assembly lines with robotic precision. The scale is unprecedented. Each Starship requires hundreds of thousands of individual components, from massive fuel tanks to microscopic sensors. Traditional aerospace manufacturing would take years per vehicle. SpaceX aims for weeks. They're not just changing how rockets get built, they're changing how humanity approaches large-scale engineering. This manufacturing revolution extends beyond rockets. The same techniques building starships could construct lunar habitats, Mars colonies, or massive space stations. SpaceX isn't just developing transportation, they're developing the industrial base for space civilization. While China targets 2030 for their first lunar landing, SpaceX could have Moonbase Alpha operational by 2028. The difference isn't just technological, it's philosophical. Government programs move cautiously with extensive reviews and conservative timelines. SpaceX moves fast and breaks things, fixing problems through iteration rather than prevention. This speed comes from treating failure as data rather than disaster. When Starship explodes, SpaceX analyzes the wreckage, identifies improvements, and flies again within months. Traditional space programs spend years investigating failures and implementing changes. The cultural difference is as important as the technological one, but speed creates its own risks. Moving fast means accepting failures that could be prevented through more careful development. The question isn't whether SpaceX will face setbacks, it's whether they can iterate fast enough to overcome them before competitors catch up. Moonbase Alpha isn't just technologically revolutionary, it's economically inevitable. The cost per ton to lunar surface using Starship is projected to be 100 times lower than traditional approaches. That's not incremental improvement. It's a fundamental shift that makes large-scale lunar development economically viable for the first time. Traditional space projects require massive government funding and decades of development. SpaceX's approach makes space accessible to private companies, international partners, and even wealthy individuals. The democratization of space access could trigger an economic boom that reshapes humanity's relationship with the cosmos. But this economic revolution depends entirely on the technology working as promised. If reusability fails, if manufacturing costs spiral, if reliability problems emerge, the entire economic model collapses. SpaceX is betting everything on their ability to make space travel routine and affordable. The stakes couldn't be higher and the margin for error has never been smaller. But the biggest revelation is still coming, and it might change everything we think we know about humanity's future in space. So here's what we've witnessed. SpaceX didn't just announce a moon base, they revealed humanity's next evolutionary leap. While China plans flags and footprints by 2030, Musk is building the industrial foundation for space civilization itself. The Raptor 3 engine isn't just propulsion technology, it's the beating heart of our multi-planetary future. But this raises the ultimate question that will define the next decade. Are we watching the birth of humanity's greatest achievement or its most dangerous gamble? Every breakthrough brings us closer to the stars, but also closer to catastrophic failure that could set space exploration back generations. The real shock isn't that SpaceX can build Moonbase Alpha. It's that they're treating it as just the warm-up act for Mars. What happens when this technology fully matures? When manufacturing scales reach true mass production? When other nations realize they're not just behind in a space race, but in an entirely different game? The next few years will determine whether humanity becomes a spacefaring civilization or remains forever earthbound. 
And it all comes down to whether SpaceX's impossible engineering can survive the ultimate test, reality itself. What do you think? Is Musk building humanity's future or gambling with it? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to Space Corps for the latest updates on humanity's greatest adventure. Boeing's Starliner program is dead in the water, and NASA is in complete panic mode. Two astronauts trapped in space for nine months. Boeing burned through their last Atlas V rockets, their $4.2 billion contract hanging by a thread. The shocking twist? SpaceX, Boeing's biggest competitor, just became their only hope for survival. Even Amazon's Jeff Bezos had to beg Elon Musk for help after refusing to work with him for years. But how did America's aerospace giant fall so far they need their rival to rescue them? Let's dive right in. The moment Boeing executives realized their $4.2 billion program was dying, they faced an impossible choice. Swallow their pride or watch American space independence crumble. What happened next shocked NASA to its core. Picture this. Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams launched thinking they'd be home in a week. That was nine months ago. They're still up there, floating 250 miles above Earth, living proof that Boeing's revolutionary Starliner is anything but revolutionary. But here's what NASA tried to hide. They knew Starliner was broken before launch. Helium leaks, overheating thrusters, systems failing left and right. Yet they still strapped human beings to this ticking time bomb and lit the fuse. Why would they risk astronaut lives on such obvious garbage? Because the alternative was admitting that America's backup plan was a complete fraud. The numbers don't lie. SpaceX's Dragon has completed 13 perfect crewed missions. Boeing Starliner? Zero successful missions, not one. That's a success rate of absolutely 0% for a company that got paid twice as much as SpaceX. But the real nightmare was just beginning. While everyone focused on Starliner's technical disasters, a 